QuickBooks Online 2023, Budgeted Income Statement Export to Excel and Modify Part Number 2. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, try using Incognito or another browser. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window, typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to be comparing the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. To toggle between the two, hit the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're going to be duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click on the tab up top to once again duplicate Ultra Vase. Back to the tab to the middle. We're going to the reports on the left so we can pick up and open up a balance sheet standard report. As that's thinking, let's take a look at where the reports are located in the business view. They are, of course, in the business overview, as you may know by this point, and the reports. And then we're going to open up the balance sheet. We're going to then tab to the right. We're going to go to the reports on the left, close up the hand boogie on the top, and open up the profit and loss on the bottom left, and then go to the dates and type in 010123 to 022823. I'm going to see this on a side by side, month by month breakout. Run it to refresh it and then tab it to the middle. Close up the boogie and change that range 010123 to 022823. Month by month, side by side to see it. Run it to refresh it. That's where we have it. Now we're going to be uh, doing our budget, remembering that the budget would be entered in the cog drop down and then the budgeting. But first we need to compare to create the budget so we can put it in the system. And QuickBooks is good at running reports once we have created and imported the budget to run reports like profit and loss or a budget versus actual type of report. So in prior presentations, we exported a trial balance and constructed it uh, into just the income statement accounts and we double check that our balance lines up to the 1324 on the income statement for the two months of data. So here we have it here. So we just have the income accounts as positive, the expense accounts negative. We don't have any subtotals in play at this point because that's kind of the easiest streamlined way to, to work with it. And now I'm gonna say that these are my uh, beginning numbers for two months of data. I'm gonna divide it by two for one month of data and then project that out over over the uh, 12 months uh, and that's what that's going to be our starting point and then we'll make adjustments from there so we're going to project out 12 months i know this data was pulled from january and february of 2023 but we're going to kind of pretend it was as of two months of November and December of the prior year so that we can then kind of project out for the full year of 2023 and then run reports budget versus actual for those two months of data that we actually have in the QuickBooks system. Okay, so to do that, I first, I would like to put my months up top, have a header column. So I'd like to pull my data down a little bit one row. So one way to do that is I can select the entire row with, with a pointer on row one, right click the selected area and insert, and that pushes it all down one row. And then I might start here and just say, this is gonna be uh, January. Let's put a little space between our actual data. I'm gonna make 
column C a little bit smaller. And let's start on column D and say this is January, Feb. That's all I should need. And QuickBooks should be able to, to pick up that trend even with only two points. I'm going to select those two, put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it to the right. And you can see it's picking up June, July and so forth. And we want to go to, of course, December. So there we have it. As it's still highlighted, I'm going to go to the uh, Home tab, Alignment, Center it. And let's also make it black and white like I typically do with a header font. Let's make it black and white on, on that. So there we have it. And then January, for the January numbers, I'm going to assume it's just going to be th this amount divided by two. So we're just going to, because this is for two months of data. So I'll just take that and divide it by two. So I'm going to say this equals this number divided by two. And that's basically our starting point. I could copy that all the way down, putting my cursor on the fill handle. And I'll just say that's my starting point all the way down. Boom. All right. And so there's, there's our starting point. So each of these rows is just taking the prior two month total and dividing it by two. Now I could copy that to the right a couple different ways as our as our starting point. I might say that I, I want to copy it like this. But if I did that, I would need this to be an absolute reference. So I could double click on that and say, okay, if I make this an absolute reference by selecting F4 on the keyboard, then I could copy it. I could copy it out this way. And then I could do that. I could do that for each of them. So for example, if I went through and I made all of these, uh, if I made all of these F4, then I could copy it out to the right. That's one way that we could do it. We could also use a mixed reference. So I could say, if I look at what the absolute reference is doing here, we've got a dollar sign before the B, a dollar sign before the two. And what that's doing in total is saying, no matter where I move this thing, whether I move it down or to the right, I want you to, to keep the same reference at that 200 for B2. Now specifically, the B means that I want you to keep the column B and the two means that I want you to keep the column two. So if I'm going to say, all right, I would like to be able to copy it down. And when I copy it down, I would like the two to be able to move down. However, I don't want the B uh, to be to be moving. I want you to keep in column B. So what I'm going to do is just say, I'm going to remove the dollar sign before the two. This is a mixed reference. So it's not going to move the column to the right, but it will move the, uh, the, the rows as I go down. So that's another way we can do it. If I just copy it down a few times to double check it, it works that way and it works this way as well, right? So I could copy it all the way kind of across and that will work. So that's another method that we could use. Now, the method I like to use for this particular purpose is I'm going to delete this is to just to go to the tab to the right. And I'm going to say this equals the prior period because I want it to be the same all the way across. And now if I copy that across, it'll just, everything will be equal to the prior period. The reason I think that's useful for a budget is because if I had some system where I'm going to say, I want March to change, then April will be dependent on March's change and everything will cascade changing going out into the future. So I think that's the, the best method to use, or that's the one we're going to use here at least. And so once I do that, January is pulling from the source data, everything else is pulling from the prior period. I could copy that both down, putting my cursor on the fill handle, copying it all the way down. And once I've copied all the way down, I could copy it all the way across, right? Or I could do it all the way across first and then copy all the way down. I can't see how far up the total is for December. Almost there. So now I'm just going to copy the whole thing over. Boom. So there we have it. So we've nicely made this, this kind of just generic, this generic uh, budget. And if you had no other information and like, and you wanted to give someone like a generic budget based on the prior year, this is what you could do, right? You could just basically do that. And you have some settings, uh, possibly in QuickBooks, they could kind of possibly do that kind of automatically for you. So you could, you could do that. Although again, if you just use last year's data, you're just running a prior year versus the current year comparative report, which you can do anyways. 
uh, using comparative reports. So now the question is generally, well, what am I going to do from this point to change it uh, based on our projections going forward? So I'm going to make the first column a little bit smaller. I'm going to save this and let's let's make this green to show that it's our source data. So I'm going to make it a different color just to show that that's my source data and I'll put some brackets around it maybe. Okay, so now let's go through here basically line by line and think about what changes might happen from each line and we'll make some tweaks to it. And actually before we do that, let's total it up down below. So yeah, we've got the total down here, but notice I copied it all the way down to the total. I don't want the total calculated this way. I want the total to be summed up this way. So I'm gonna sum up the total like that and then copy it to the right so it sums it up. We might wanna put a, an underline under this so it will emphasize that. Maybe I put an underline under this and then I'm gonna put a total column to the right which will sum up the entire year. So I'm gonna say total, total, or year to date or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to copy the formatting here, home tap, format painter, copy the formatting and sum it up equals the SUM, one of the most famous or the most famous form you lie, sum it up January through December. Then I can copy that down, putting my cursor on the fill handle to copy that down. And then I'll put an underline under this one again and copy this to the right. So there's our year to date uh, amount or a total for the entire year amount. Sometimes they put that total, by the way, up front at the beginning. So sometimes you might want to put the total at the beginning, but whatever, there it is. All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna keep the billable item as is. I'm not gonna change that one. I'm gonna imagine that this one, we think it's gonna go up. Now there's a couple general trends that you might use, which are the easiest things to think about. You might say, well, I think the income is going to go up by a percentage each time frame. So that's one one kind of easy thing to put the data input on. Or you might think that that there's going to be an increase based on based on uh, a step like after three months, you think it's going to jump up for whatever reason. Or you might have a system where it goes up by a certain dollar amount. Those are the easiest ones to kind of increased by. So for whatever reason, we're going to say that we think from January to February and going out into the future, this revenue account is going to increase by 5%. So how can I calculate that? I could say 1130 times uh, 0.05, 5%. That would be, it goes up by 5650 plus the 1130. Or I could say I want to have 0 0.05 plus 1, 1 0.05 or 105% times the 1130 that gets us where we want to go. So let's do that. I'm going to double click on February here on February. And I'm going to say this equals the prior amount times the uh, 1.05, 105%, 100% plus 5% in essence, right? And so I'm going to say boom. So now that brings it up to the 1187 and then I can copy that all the way across and it should nicely populate uh, increase and notice if I don't do that because I, ha I said equal the prior cell it now takes the new amount instead of instead of taking the original divided by two instead of taking this original amount it's always going to be taking the new amount but I want it to continually compounding the increase so I'm going to put my cursor on it fill handle and drag it all the way to the right and that will then not to the total but to the December, and now the total totals up to the 17,986. All right, let's do the next one. And, and notice these are gonna be the more difficult ones because the revenue is often the things that we're gonna, we're gonna think are gonna change based on what we're gonna do. Possibly we're gonna advertise more. Possibly we're gonna buy more equipment. You know, we're gonna have to make our projections. Possibly the business environment will change. And then the expenses, a lot of times, some of them will be more fixed. So we can just basically keep the standard whatever it is all the way across utilities will just be pretty much the same all the way across all the, unless we have a seasonal kind of thing going on there so in any case we're gonna we're gonna say this one's gonna increase by 10 percent each time so we'll do the same thing i'll double click on this i'm gonna say the prior thing times the 1.1 1 .1, 100 plus 10 percent right 10 percent and then enter and so then now it's it steps up for the rest of the time frame. 
I'm going to put my cursor back on it and copy it all the way to the right so it, it compounds on itself to get to the, to the 624. So we're looking a lot better next year. Now let's do something a little bit different. Instead of it compounding like that, we might say maybe I'm going to do something saying it's going to increase starting in February by $1,000. So we think it's just going to increase by a set dollar amount instead of compounding, compounding on itself. So I'm going to double click on this and say I'm going to take the prior amount plus $1,000. So we'll just increase it by 1,000. Now it has stepped up to 1,000 because each cell represents the prior one. And now I'm just going to copy that one across. So each time it'll just increase by $1,000. So another kind of fairly easy arithmetic type of thing to do. All right, so let's go back on over and then say, okay, the next one is cost of goods sold. Now cost of goods sold is generally going to be tied to have this have a profit margin a relationship to the sale of products because it's 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 this cost of the goods that we're selling. So we're going to have this. So if this one is going up by 10%, you would think there'd be something similar happening down here. So in other words, I could say, okay, well, the cost of goods sold, if I look at February is is uh two two nine seven seven divided by the three two one four eight which is here and say the cost of goods sold is like 0.737 percent of the of the sales so i could use that formula i could say this equals i could say this equals this times 0.73767 or whatever and copy that across that's that's one way we could do it uh, or i can just say it's going to increase by that same 1.1 which should end up with the same result and this should be a negative i'd have to say negative of that amount times whatever or i could say this is going to be equal to the prior amount times 1.1 it's going to have that percentage increase which is going to be the same uh, across so so we'll do that and so now this so so if i do that this is at the two five two seven five divided by the three two one four eight so now we're at 0.7862 and if i copy that across all the way across to december and i and i do the division here i could say okay this is at six five 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 six divided by this number 83384 and we got the 0 0.786 right okay so and then the totals at the 491 now some of the expense accounts should be a little bit easier down here so if i look at some of those i'm going to say all right let's go down here we got the bank the bank fees 30 35 dollars let's say that's the same all the way across it's probably in material not really worth getting too bothered over in a budget the the liability insurance now insurance you kind of got to think if you're going to be doing a cash based system or an, an accrual based system i'm going to try to try to just show when we're going to pay the insurance uh, at this point just so you can see how you might see it like a, a tier uh, type of system so i might say i'm going to record the insurance as an expense when i pay for it for example and and look at it more on a cash flow basis and say let's delete all of this and i'm just going to assume that i'm going to pay the insurance in february let's say six thousand dollars in february negative six thousand dollars and then i'm going to pay again in september negative six thousand so you might have something like that if you're trying to do your budget kind of on a cash-based system and you might have like a step-up situation that we'll see shortly like like let's say that the internet for the business let's say that's going to be pretty much standard we'll keep that as is then we've got our wages situation the taxes this is payroll taxes i believe and then the wages so this is a, is an area you might have a step up kind of situation you might say well i'm going to pay the same wages but maybe in june that's when i'm due to give people raises for cost of living or whatever uh, raises or something so you might say i'm going to keep this as is until june maybe and then you have that step up where i'm going to say it's going to be the prior amount times 110 percent 10 percent increase so i'm going to say times 1.1 one oh one hundred and ten percent increasing it by ten percent and now you've got this this step up that happened and maybe you don't expect that to be compounding going forward because that's how wages often work they're tiered up at one point and then they stay 
they stay standard uh, for some time after that, uh, unlike possibly revenue, which hopefully has a nice steady flow uh, increase upwards. Let me tweak that one a little bit. I think I wanted to do the step up in July. So let's say I'm going to copy this June. I'm going to copy from May back over to June. And then I'm going to do in July that step up thing. So I'm going to say July is going to equal the prior period times 1.1. So now in July going, going forward, you'll have that amount. Uh, out to here 87 so that looks good now then we've got the sales tax the payroll tax so if there's a change to payroll you would expect payroll taxes to change which gets complex because the payroll taxes can have different caps on them and whatnot and so there's a couple ways you can think about it it'd be similar to like the cost of goods sold relationship to the to the inventory because this is basically our portion the employer portion of taxes so you could you might think of it as it should have the same relationship that it did before so i could say well taxes were 486 divided by wages of 6983 so that's about 6.6 uh, 6.95% so i could go here and take and say this is going to be this times so i right i could say this is going to be equal this times the 0.0695 or something like that or I could just increase it by the same amount which should give me basically the same result so I could say this is going to be equal to the prior period times 1.1 and I should have the same kind of jump up so if I then say this is 535 divided by 7682 we get the 0 0.069 so on and so forth so the taxes should jump up in a similar fashion and that would make sense okay all right we're almost there continuing on continuing on we've got the supplies let's go ahead and just keep the supplies as they are so that's somewhat standard uh and then the supplies may or may not be material depending on the business telephone that's usually somewhat standard so i'll keep that the same going across utilities usually somewhat standard although there could be changes seasonally uh, to some degree which may or may not be relevant gain or loss on sale of investment now that's something that doesn't happen every period it only happens every so often so because we're not in the business of selling investments so i'm going to delete this whole thing and, and imagine we're not going to see that happening again that's just something that happened last time that's why we put it down below in like the other other income area depreciation let's just keep that the same now if you had a depreciation schedules you can actually calculate what the actual depreciation kind of would be based on your your equipment for the current time period of course if you purchased or you're planning on purchasing more equipment that would kind of skew your depreciation schedules but i'm just going to keep that in essence the same going forward and then we've got the interest let's so let's say the interest just to show how we could have something actually going down because the interest expense is going to be based on the loans that we have so again we could look at the loans and actually calculate exactly you know what the interest will be uh, based on the amortization tables but we might say hey look i think the interest is going to go down each period because we're going to be paying off the loan so it's going to be decreasing so let's say we're going to say the interest starting in february equals the prior period times 0.95 it's 95 percent of the prior period and we think that trend is going to continue each month so i'll just put my cursor on the prior one and just copy that across so that's another fairly easy trend that you can that you can put in place all right and then and then we've got the the last bit here scrolling back on over uh of the miscellaneous let's keep that as is so let's keep that as is that's what we have thus far let's just clean it up a bit let's put some brackets around it maybe i'll select the whole thing and put some brackets around it because that's always fun boom and then we've got our underline down below we might want to put like a double underline i'm holding down control so i can select uh, this one. Oh, hold on let's just select these down here like this don't do the whole control thing and then i'm going to put a double underline on that and then i'll put a double underline here just to match it okay so then the, here's our net income at the end so we've got a negative amount for february so that's a little bit that's a little bit scary which is due in part to this large 
uh, expense that we have that we put in February for the insurance. That's where you got to be careful on the cash flows when you're paying, you know, a prepayment system. So and but then we got the income going back in. So we just got to make sure we got the cash flow to deal with that. And there it is. So this is the year to this is our total at the end, which we totaled up this way. And you could double check it by totaling it up also by summing up this way. So this is a type of table that you can do those, you know, double check kind of total, which is nice if you can do that. So now we've done it, you know, totaled it up vertically and horizontally. And so that looks pretty good. So now that we have our data, we're going to we're going to put this back into QuickBooks. Uh, and by going in and we'll do this next time. Just this is a this is what we'll see in a future episode. It's going to be great. We're going to hit the drop down and we're going to we're going to go to the budgeting and we'll enter the budget into here. Why? When I already constructed it in QuickBooks so we can run budget versus actual reports as time passes. And that's what QuickBooks does well. So we'll do that next time.